Hello everyone, Mike Arnold here, co-founder of Fat Trading Partners, along with Bob Iaccino, getting ready for the weekly stock sector overview. By the way, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing, ringing that bell, and hitting that like button. Longer term subscribers, please leave a comment and like the video so we get wider distribution, trying to get to that 5k subscriber sooner rather than later, so all your help is appreciated. All right, still doing with one camera, still working on a uh, limited setup for at least a couple more weeks, uh, trying to secure the other computer for the new streaming setup, but it is uh, backordered for a little bit. Supply chain. So, oh boy, oops. There we go, hold on. Oops, XLE, what happened there? Oh boy, oh boy. Tried to delete something. XLE. Now I got to add it back. Sorry for the little issue there. Let's just add that back in. There we go. I tried to delete the the little double that was no longer and deleted the. There we go. Deleted the uh, symbol. Okay. Well, XLE energy sector, again, sorry for the quick delay, did not want to stop and re-record this though. Uh, still in bullish mode, never tipped to bearish mode. We got the full pullback. You see on that daily, this potential double top right in here did not trigger. Again, just because this is a potential. Remember, I get this question all the time, but you put it on, you had all bullish and bearish patterns. Well, one triggered, the double bottom did trigger. On the close of the 20th, the double top never triggered because it needed a close below the low of 69.66, which never happened. So that was just a potential. You got to prepare for both sides of the market and you do it ahead of time. This one continued. So bullish move, especially with strong earnings with Chevron and Exxon on Friday, continued to move up. Double pattern is completed. And remember, long-term bullish mode uh, back essentially just went to pretty much neutral mode and now turning back up. Again, really pay attention to uh, crude, though. Let me get to here. I'm jumping over to my other tab to crude. Why I'm bringing that up is because if crude closes below about 94, watch for a pullback. I will start pausing on any short-term bullish move and watch for a pullback in the XLE if crude closes below that 94. Until then, until then, let's put on our reverse harmonics from this last move. We can always reverse it again back to this prior move. But let's put on our reverse harmonics and see what the next potential targets are. So pullback area a little overextended from the daily rotation zone cycles at the top. So, and it's overbought on the daily. So I am starting to watch for a pullback. May, more major pullback, if especially if crude closes back below that 94, would be about 74.60. And then I'd be watching if it did drop below that about 73. A close below 73 puts me on hold for the time being. A minor pullback would be to this little gap fill and essentially the 50 day exponential hooking up, which is about 75.16. So you do have some pullback areas. Again, weeklies in neutral and still turning up. So the pullback might not be as extreme unless crude starts getting below that 200 day simple moving average. Then I'll really be pulling for that next pullback. Targets the upside, 79.36. Then we still have a gap left behind, and that gap would be to 82.38, and then the harmonic is 82.87. Remember, anywhere in here is a potential reversal zone, especially with cycles at the top on the daily and overbought conditions. So again, if we start pushing up in here, I'm not getting aggressive until we get that pullback move on energy but energy still is in a long-term pattern. More so than this, you should have been long energy, something already off these doubles or double plays and some and continuation plays in some stocks. Now, the, if it wasn't removed with double plays in those individual stocks and after hitting those targets, it's aggressively trail a stop and then watch for pullbacks for re-entry. XLRE. 
XLRE continued power move up. Still not in long-term buy coming up to a critical junction. So we will have to see with next week. Remember the 10-year note pulling back. Mortgage rates uh, can be slightly coming up dropping. And the market was in a uh, Fed cut or pivot, I should say, Fed pivot mode. But Neil Kashikari, with his interview, said the market was getting ahead of itself. And we have Fed speakers coming up. I'd be watching for more of a pause and a pullback. Cycles at the top, very overbought on XLRE and still not in long-term buy. So I am watching for a pullback. And if it's more aggressive for this gap fill, the gap fill would be 40 to 60. So still nothing long-term. And considering how overbought and cycles at the top on the daily and cycles at the top on the weekly, and also coming in against the weekly rotation zone, I'm pretty much sticking clear. Even if it continues to rally this week, I'm sticking clear. Major resistance. It hit this resistance shelf right here about 44.45. There is a key uh, close at 44.83. And then you have the 50% retracement and this breakdown zone. So even if we squeak out a little more rally at this much overbought, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to either get a long-term buy signal again or we have a substantial pullback and I have another good signal. Especially with, let me review the markets also real quick in case you don't tune into the live streams and then I'd wonder why. S&P, we'll just take a look at the S&P because it's a broad market. Getting into, it's overbought on the RSI. Cycles are getting to the daily top. Weekly is getting closer to major overbought level. NASDAQ is overbought and cycles pinned at the top. So I'm starting to watch for a rollover mood and we have some other Fed speaks coming up this week. So if the market starts rolling over, would not want to be in something like XLRE, at least in the short term, especially if Fed speakers keep reiterating that the market's getting ahead of themselves and there's no potential pause and especially no potential pivot on deck. Cautious there. XLF. XLF. Remember, we can get very strong bear market rallies. And this is a pretty much uh, was just a uh, Fed's going to pause, rip your face off rally. And we're still not in long term buy mode. So XLF triggering that double. Still not hitting that first target. You see triggering that double actually multiple times on that daily. And coming up to the first target, I would be aggressive at this point. And if you're still long, financials raise the stop. The stop raise on this would be a closing basis below 31.64. A more aggressive stop. You see this breakout area and this base and the 37 and a half harmonic. I know we have got double here. One's a retracement, one's an expansion. And the rising rotation zone. But you get a close below about 32.50. I would... Uh, it's back to uh, bearish mode in financials, especially with the cycles at the top on the daily and at the top on the weekly and within the weekly rotation zone. Going to start watching for a rollover play in this. So I would not be aggressively searching for any financial stocks at this point. If you are in them and been playing to the long side, this is where raise the stops and watch for a rollover play. Yes, financials can still eke out some higher moves. But that would just be a continued rally within a bear market for financial stocks. It's a long way off from triggering a long-term buy. So this is just a recovery move. My suggestion can't give you specific trading advice, but definitely is to raise stops and trail in uh, any financial positions you have. XLK, technology, still did not trigger a long-term buy yet. Running up close to it, but no long-term buy. Very strong recovery in this. Uh, we had that double bottom triggered. Remember last week we hit the first target, stop reduction, and running up and completing the pattern. Daily cycles at the top, overbought, pro and with a divergence pattern. Daily cycles not quite at the top, I should say. RSI overbought with a divergence pattern. Going to start watching and between the 50 and the 62 and a half. So even if it ekes out a little more of a rally, I'm watching for a potential rollover play. I'd be raising stops again pretty aggressively on technology because anywhere in here up to about 148, uh, 25, 148, 21 is a potential rollover play weekly. 
cycles at the top and against the weekly uh, 50 period exponential. So would I be getting aggressively long? No, if you're already long technology stocks, this is where I look to raise the stop, raise the stop and trail out. Your key pullback level easily, easily on any market weakness could get back to 139.10. What's that? The prior breakout zone, the first target on that double, which is now over and the rising rotation zone. What makes me really cautious and going back to bear mode is a close below 135.60. If you want to get a little more conservative on that closed mode, it would be about 133.50. Why there? Because that's the 50% retracement of this up move, and it would then close below the breakout zone on this whole up move, which was retested. So you have aggressive and conservative. At least take something to uh, lock in some trailing profits because it does not have a long-term buy signal yet, and that has to trigger on a weekly basis. XLI, pretty much at the completion of the pattern on this double again. So industrial stocks, if you're long, still no long-term buy. Again, things have come up to very key levels, but not triggered long-term. Go back to buy mode. So same story with industrials. Trailing, moving up the stop aggressively, watching for a pullback move. That's where we sit with the XLI. Where's the pullback move on XLI? So for anything industrial related, again, my key pullback, this is really overdone, but my key pullback level would be with watching the daily rotation zone about 93. If we did drop below there, next key area I'm going back is about 91. But I'd be more aggressive trailing a stop, majorly overbought, cycles at the top on the daily, cycles at the top on the weekly, hitting key resistance, end of this move. This is a major support becoming resistance zone. Trail out my recommendation on XLI or if it's completed patterns, take something off the table and watch for the pullback and then we can reassess loading. A lot of things are way too overbought and there's no point in chasing here. I would not be going aggressively short those sectors that are stronger. Well, on a rollover play, it's going short the sectors that are weaker, and those are the ones we watch for. Consumer discretionary. Uh, consumer discretionary still in long-term sell. A nice recovery back that 50% harmonic. Cycles getting to the top on the daily, getting to overbought, potential divergence on there. Major gap play. I'd be watching for a breakdown below Friday's low and then back to 156.59. And if that's broken, back to 150.44. If you have been playing consumer discretionary, again, I'd be raising stops aggressively. This could roll over at any point, getting very ahead of itself. And in the weekly rollover zone, technically the weekly on this is neutral, but you're in the rollover zone and you have the major breakdown area right here to the candle body about 166.88 and the 50. I would not be chasing consumer discretionary higher at this point. It could eke out a little more to the upside, but that would just be to raise stops. Again, too many things are way overextended now to the upside. And even it's trying to, it's risking dollars to squeeze out pennies in my book. And that's never a good strategy. So you can move up stops and still, you know, if there's a few cents left, all right, I'm going to go and unwind at some targets. But I'm not going to sit here and risk a, a, a pullback all the way to like 147 to make another buck. So consumer discretionary also very overbought. XLP. Uh, what's interesting enough on this is still it, it's in back in the long-term buy mode sorry it's still now in back in long-term buy mode has not triggered this potential double and this is consumer staples triggered it actually on the daily and then this little gap down so consumer staples especially on market pullbacks there could be some pullback in consumer staples but i will be watching due to this triggering a much bigger bottoming pattern at least on the daily i'm now watching for bullish plays in consumer staples and we're back into long-term buy mode in consumer staples with this key close. 
All right, so we have long-term buy mode. And we have the double confirmed on the weekly, but triggered on the daily. I would just be watching for good plays. Again, consumer staples, there's, there's some value plays in there, but there's also some things that are very overbought. So I like to look at the fundamentals or have a very strong technical pattern before just scooping up consumer staples. It's still to be picky. This is still a bear market rally from our fundamental standpoint and our systematic standpoint. But consumer staples are something back into buy mode that I'll be looking for. XLV healthcare. Healthcare. Let me get back to weekly mode. Healthcare in buy mode again. On weekly, shifted to buy mode a couple weeks ago. It's actually also in conservative, buy, aggressive and conservative buy mode. All right. Uh so now let's see where we stand. The only hesitation is daily cycles are at the top. My pullback level I'm watching for is 130.24. So that's, and we closed, remember, above that 62 and a half. We've hit that 87 and a half to the 100 zone where I need it to get. I'm watching for that pullback where I need it to get really more aggressive uh, on the daily is we need to have a daily close back above about 134.20. 134.17, I'll just go with 134.20 because then I will start watching for more bullish plays to the upside. Until we get that, I'm watching for a pullback, especially with daily cycles at the top, close to overbought, divergence, and a divergence is waning momentum. So I'm watching for some kind of pullback play in healthcare before getting uh, aggressive in it. And that would just be trailing a stop. XLB, materials. Again, everything's so overbought. Material still in long-term sell. Nice little recovery. There was not a double pattern in there. I'm now watching uh, with cycles at the top and overbought. There's nothing I'm chasing in materials. I'm watching for a pullback to 76 and then we'll reassess. Okay, because you have daily. So much stuff is would be chasing at this point. Yes, there's weekly cycles still aren't at the top, but I'm waiting for that daily to pull back and see how strong it is in the pullback. We did get some uh, improvements in commodities, but not substantially enough to make me super bullish just yet. And it's still in long-term sell mode. So I'm sort of waiting for the daily cycles to drop and in wait and see mode with uh, Material Select Spider. XLC, now here's an example. You know how much the market's rallied. Long-term, I mean, what's, I mean, we're up oh, like 9% in, in July, right? So look at, look at this. XLC, communications, dead sideways, can't get anything on it in this last week with this super strong rally. I mean, the S&P in the last week, put this into perspective, and this is where you're looking at relative strength. The S&P in the last week was up uh, four and a quarter percent. XLC, communications in the last week, up uh, 6.68%, so 68 basis points versus 428 basis points. This, what do I look for in this? I look for if the market rolls over, like we're watching for, these are shorting opportunities. Why? It has not been able to get anything going. Still in a consolidation mode. Still a very weak sector. Sitting here at the weekly rotation zone. So watching for breakdown plays in XLC long-term bearish mode. Cycles at the top on the daily. Cycles at the top. Getting to the top on the weekly. Very weak this is a short play only in XLC on market weakness. That's an example of relative strength. That's one of the first areas I will look to for shorts upon any market weakness. XLU utilities, very strong rally. Remember, we went back to buy mode on the end of June. Huge rally up 651 basis points on the 10-year rallying pretty big. Remember, utilities are interest rate sensitive. Here was your 10-year. Also triggered that inverse head and shoulders. I'm watching for actually a pullback in the 10-year because it is overbought. What does that have to do with utilities? Again, utilities very interest rate sensitive. So what do you think I'm watching for? If we get that pullback in the 10-year, I'm watching for a pullback in utilities. Utilities, bear flag, and then rip your face off rally in there. Patience, patience, trail utilities, trail stops and utilities. 
actually, depending on the pullback, my first key support is about 72. If we did drop below that, we have a gap fill back to 70, 78. We did get the close above the 62 and a half on this whole down move. So even on a pullback, I'm still expecting a return to 75.61 to 77.15. So would not crowd stops in utilities, but would manage stops appropriately unless in case something happens with the long-term interest rates and then, then they get slammed again. But again, even if we pull back to this 50% harmonic, 70.77, daily rotation zone and fill this gap, that does not turn anything bearish, and that would not turn anything bearish. You see the 50% level on the long-term system would not tip it back into long-term bearish mode. So utilities, trail stops, on pullbacks, watch for re-entry plays or new buy setups in utility sector. XRT, retail, retail, still long way from buy mode sell mode and this is similar to communications look at retail on a re remember we were up 450 basis points essentially in the s p retail down 24 basis points barely trying to hold on to the weekly rotation zone guess what weekly at the top on the cycles daily getting to the top on the cycles this is another i will watch for retail shorts why shorts way underperformed with this rally huge underperformance with this rally so guess what? Market rolls over. I'm looking for shorts in the retail. Even stuff like Walmart. Walmart still trading at a, a fairly high PE. It gave warning. It gave that warning for the rest of the year because their consumer base is really getting hurt by inflation. The gap was bought. The gap was bought in Walmart and just essentially shrugged off everything. Look, shrugged off everything in a week. Oh, there's no problems. So that's an example. I'm not saying Walmart's necessarily short. We'll watch for short plays in the retail sector. But this is an example of something that there'll be short plays setting up. Way underperformance. Horrible. Yeah, it did rally. But this is an incredibly weak rally versus the market. So rollover, short retail. But pick your shorts widely. You just don't short something like you don't go, well, Apple, you know, people buy Apple stuff. I'm just going short Apple. No, that's that's actually not a good short idea. Short weakness, short weaker retail. Actually, you know, if you get a nice short pattern, Walmart could set up for a potential rollover short again. IYT, transportation, triggered the double, still in long-term sell, but we've also had that double triggered. It closed last week above there, and we continued to follow through. First and second profit targets hit. And these are the kind of things. You can have double bottoms within long-term bear market rallies or bear market sells. So short-term rally, long-term sell. Cycles at the top on the weekly. Hit the first, second targets. Is there potentially a little more upside? Yeah. But you get up to this two, I'd be trailing stops pretty aggressively up here. You get to 236.50 area, you got this key resistance up there. I'd be trailing stops really aggressively because this could easily drop back to 224.70 to, to 221. And let's work on the stop level because it's handy to know when a double stops out. So that stop level would be on a closing basis below about 215.89. But really, you get a close back below. 219.50, I, I wouldn't be touching uh, transportation at all at that point. So my advice, yes, you can try to eke out a little more, trail stops. Don't know your specific positions. If you're in something that's really outperforming, give it a little more room. But this starts breaking down, especially below Friday's low. We'll start watching for the bigger pullback. DBC, still in long-term buy. DBC. Again, you see this candle above here confirming this double bottom, but the close back down. So you you've it's confirmed the potential or the it's confirmed a double bottom. So it's a, a uh, confirmed double bottom, but not yet triggered. Guess what? I am patient on commodities until this double bottom actually triggers. Then I will start being more aggressive. So watch for a daily close above 2616. That has not triggered yet, so still patient, especially with cycles at the top on the daily, cycles at the bottom on the weekly. So this is setting up first potential 
for some uh, potentially a couple of weeks at least of bullish moves, waiting for that daily trigger, and then we'll be watching for commodity plays. So commodity, things like gold also could be setting up for a medium to longer term bottom. Is it there yet? No, but watching. Commodities are getting in play. Going to gauge this little pullback. By the way, your key pullback level on DBC is about 2570. DBA, which is the agriculture subset, still in long-term sell, not back into buy mode. So I am still being patient on this. So right now, cycles at the top. I'm watching for a pullback weekly at the bottom and against this daily rotation zone. So DBA, I'm still, still sticking clear off unless I get some short-term buy signals. A early warning, if you start getting bought on a closing basis back above 2079 in DBA, I will aggressively be looking for agriculture plays. SMH, you had that bill going in still. Watching for another long-term rollover play. Short term, we're still in rally mode. We still have the chips bill through the, uh, you know, that looks to get past. Uh, things are getting to the top on the daily. Still in long term sell mode also on this. So again, we have, you get the rallies. We had those double bottom plays and now we're getting a retracement rally. Retracement rally. We closed above the 62 and a half, so I'm still watching for a tiny bit more upside, 241.64 to 249. Would not chase this higher at this point, would just be trailing out stops, trailing stops on already positions. Key support coming in at 221.26. If we close below that, watching starting for the bigger pullback in semis, weekly on the semis at the top, close to rolling over. So semis have had their rally, would not be looking aggressive semi. There's some semi earnings coming up this week also. So just be cautious, would not chase anything higher if you're already in it, manage stops. GDX, gold miners, gold's trying to get in a long mid to long-term bottom. Gold miners start getting above about 2660 on a closing basis. We'll start watching for a play in some gold miners, especially with cycles turning up. And those are just a play to see how they react. Remember, in long term sell mode and key resistance, miners 28, majors about 2930. So I will start watching, but managing positions closely in gold miners once they can start getting a daily close above 2660 and that's a counter trend play until we know that gold is in the bottoming formation value triggered to double not yet to the first target value stock still even on a pullback cycles at the top on the daily cycles at the top on the weekly long term Still in long-term sell has a little more run to go up to, but if this gets that first target and closes on the week, you know, around 140, it's in long-term buy mode again. So watching for value plays, but they have to be value plays. They have to actually be more value plays instead of I'm not chasing uh, way overvalued value stocks at this point. Sorry, value stocks. Watching for a key pullback, 135.98 to about 134.60. That does not invalidate the double at all. At this point, to invalidate this double, because we haven't even hit the first target, I mean, your stop has to be below about 130.50 on a closing basis. So the double's a long way off from invalidating, even on a bigger pullback. But I'm watching for the pullback with overbought conditions and the RSI at the top. And then once we get the pullback and a rotation back up or a percent B buy, I will be watching for value plays. Growth plays. Growth, again, still in long-term sell, bear market rally, triggering that double, coming back. And this is, this is the kind of thing I'm watching for now in value. Remember, we got that pullback and growth and then the rotation back up. And this was a percent B buy. And we're running up virtually to the final target. And this final target was a lower probability. We've hit the sec first, second target. First target hit twice. So 
essentially this is a very aggressive there's only a few more pennies to eke out on the final target you're against a major breakdown zone that's this black line right here so i'm watching and that's a 50 percent harmonic if it does eke out a little more bit on the first little bit at the beginning of this week it's just aggressively and then unwind a lot of growth stocks that have hit targets or aggressively move up the stops on the weekly not yet overbought but cycles are at the top and you're again you're against that 50 percent and anywhere between this 50 and 62 with the breakdown zone being here watching for a rollover play longer term in growth all right that's where we stand what's the message lots of things are in potential topping positions running out of momentum also setting up divergences plays so don't get lazy with stops and don't just give back tons of profits if things do roll over. Put stops in sensible locations, but manage them. If we get a market rollover, especially with the Fed speakers this week, like uh, Neil Kashikari starts saying the market's getting ahead of itself. They're misunderstanding the Fed's. Fed's a long way from uh, stopping. If we start getting some rollover plays and we're still in midst of earnings season, we could get numbers still. We have more numbers coming out this week. Some markets at cycle tops, we start getting rollover plays. Communications and retails are the first areas to look for key shorts from our perspective and to manage everything else. And then watch for a pullback in value and then a resumption of trend in value even with a pullback in the markets. That's where we stand. Hope this helps everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll talk to everyone later. Bye for now.